All right, welcome back to Zenstep.com. Uh, here we are with Red from N14. Yep. Hello. Uh, Academy Raider is our first card. Uh, it's okay. Uh, I don't, so I don't like it. A little lame. He's just a 1-1 one, one for 3. Like, He does, like, kind of draw you cards. He, could, he, he uh, should have been much, big, much bigger. More damage. He could have been a 2-2. Two, two. More damage, more damage, more damage. Action Treason, excellent. Yep, perfectly fine card. Lots of seen, seen it before. Awaken the Ancient is a fascinating card. Uh, that's like a lot. Seven, Some, yeah. seven. Yeah, like, so cards like Enchant Lands or things that do things to your lands are like prone to two for ones, or as part of the two for one, you're losing a land. Right. Which is like really like awful. But this turns your land into a seven seven with haste. Like, that, I feel like that's worth the risk. It's like a game. That's a lot. Like, you know, the only thing is that it's. And you're probably it's, playing it at. On turn five, when you have five mana, right? You want to enchant the ones. So yeah, it's tap. more like a five mana spell, um, and you could play Hellkite and like preserve your lands or something like, like weird like that. But I don't know. I think I think this was like worth giving a shot. It's definitely definitely powerful. We'll see if it's good enough. Yep. Next we have uh, Goblin Bombardment. I mean, it does make Doom Blade pretty good though. Barrage the Expendables. Yeah. So Barrage of the Ex Barrage of Expendables, uh, new Goblin Bombardment. Not nearly as good as Goblin Bombardment. All I think of is like throwing like Sylvester so Stallone and Stone Cold Steve Austin at people. <laughs> Bruce Willis. <laughs> nice. Uh, yeah, we just have better sack owl. It's like if the if the sack was free and they added a cost, it would just have preprinted Goblin Bombardment. So they're trying something a little different, but they made it worse. Yep. Next up, we have Battle Sliver. Uh, I like what he does, but he's really expensive. Yeah, five mana is not really where you want to be. Uh, and the the sliver deck that I guess I would be thinking of, I'd probably like pick out four, and just like kind of stop there. Yeah. Blur sliver. However, this guy is definitely in my sliver deck. Everything has haste. Yeah, the just, haste one. Just heart sliver for one more mana. Yep. Next up, we have burning earth. This card will be joyous for red players. Like it's it's one sided mana barbs. Uh, for non-basic lands and like mono red players are going to be all about this. They're going to love it. They're going to jam it. They're going to slam it. They're going to hopefully it wins them something. And it, it, it might. Yeah, it's it's pretty strong effect. I mean, especially right now. Like, I do think decks might have to like... Because red looks like it's going to be really good like, right away. Um, so I think like a lot of the decks, like especially the Jund and you know other control decks that don't run any basics or like one or two... Yeah, you're gonna be taking a lot of damage off yeah. this stupid card, and uh, I don't know. You might have to add some basics, like make your mana base kind of worse. Or at least enchantment eight. Yeah, uh, enchantment eight, definitely. Especially Except if they play Burning Earth and that other, the uh, the Awaken the Ancient, then you have like two good targets for the enchantment eight. That's so true. It becomes like really good. You know, really good. Yeah. Next uh, up, we have Canyon Minotaur. Yeah, another Minotaur in this set. Yeah. There's like three now? Three, four? Yeah. That's a lot. We've seen him before. Uh, he's basically just Hill Giant. Yep. Next. So, one of the controversial cards, Chandra Pyromaster. Uh, she is both the face of the set and Felicia Day. Is that relevant to her actual card? Uh, well, I didn't know Felicia Day was a Planeswalker. She's not a Planeswalker, she's an actress. That's not true. Okay. She's using her fire magic to, to fool you. Oh, okay. Yeah. Uh, yeah, so... She's interesting. The Chandra Pyromaster is interesting. Um, I don't think she's good enough, but she has potential. Like, she has, like... Her zero ability is, like, pseudo draw card. You but still you, have to pay mana for the... But you're still going to pay, pay mana for the card. So it's kind of like, you know, it's kind of like drawing a card if you want to use that card. So half the time, if it's not gas, you don't even bother. Uh, you'll never use it the turn she comes in because you don't have any mana. Um, you know, like, it's it's kind of cool with, like, lands. Because um, you just get free lands. And you don't have to, like... So if you haven't played your land for the turn. Correct. Which, you know, you're a red deck, so you're low land anyways. So it's, it's mm. possible. Um, her plus one is, like, not super relevant because, you know, it's only pinging small stuff and pinging you for the same time. Uh, the camp block is is what makes her, I think, 
getting to be playable because you know pinging a thrag tusk and you and then hitting them because their thrag tusk can't block it's pretty good um yeah i mean like i guess that's fine but this cards that do that already for two mana but this is a continuous effect for the rest of the game though so is uh fire fist striker yeah but fire fist striker dies that's the problem so does she no, what one upside is she goes up to like a really high loyalty like she goes a five yeah turn one like turn one you know turn one you play her yeah i just i don't know like uh rouse wreck is like a half red planeswalker and i think he's more red than she is okay because he he does lightning bolt and he he lightning bolts her uh her ultimate is one of the worst ultimates though like it totally can miss like it just you copy something three times yeah uh and it's not like like it's what are you like, gonna it's, hit? It's like it's not like red has lightning bolt right now, where you could just lightning bolt them three times. Like, she's, she's, she's kind of, yeah, so like this really like benefits the instant or sorcery like version of red deck wins, which isn't red deck wins right now. Right, which is currently not red deck wins. Plus, uh, that doesn't really make sense with the the plus one, which makes sure you just not block. So like you're on an attacking strategy if you want to make yeah, use of that. It's like she's too too divergent thing. Right, instead of like being like really central focalized focalized. Focused on one, yeah. on one uh, strategy. So like you're gonna like flip what, like a shock? <laughs> yeah, take oh, six. Take six. Yeah. Um, uh, what would be really sweet though if like you like had morbid and flipped up the brimstone volley? <laughs> take yeah. fifteen. Yeah. That would be that would be stupid. That's like that's living a dream. But you could set you could try to set that up like you know like. Yeah, I mean it is ten cards too, so like you you you'll hit something. Right, but the thing is, like, it's going to be really, like, not that great what you hit because the you're going to be mostly creatures. The deck has to shift. It has to be, like, a, a now a spell and creature deck. She, she's, like, too split, and the draw card, like, uh, it has potential. Like, that's really the only, like, maybe part about her. Yep. But, I don't know. It's tough. I just uh, I, better I, than most of the other shockers. Put it this way. Uh, sure. I mean, great. Chandra bar is uh, really low. I think Razorex the best Chandra. <laughs> <laughs> All right, moving on. Uh, Chandra's all rage. Very good unlimited. Excellent unlimited. Uh, not good enough for standard because we have Mizium orders that cost half. Yep. Chandra's Phoenix. Phoenix. This uh, will be played. Definitely be played definitely be played more after Pillar of Flame because Pillar of Flame is like excellent against this card. Yeah. I do like the synergy with this like and Ch the new Chandra. Like I mean it's the same synergy as all the Chandras like because they all do the, pretty much the same things. Thing, yeah. uh, so like getting your, your Phoenixes back is, is pretty cool but like as the game goes on a 2-2 flyer like becomes a lot less relevant but it will grind out games for you sometimes. Yep. I have lost to this card multiple occasions. Oh yeah. Next up we have Cyclops Tyrant. It's not very good. Um, six mana, three four with intimidate that can't block. Small yeah. Guys. So it's like pretty much just straight up just for attacking. And I, uh, I I will try my hardest not to play him anywhere. Yeah. He's that bad. Yeah, he's designed just to attack, and at six mana that doesn't really like happen. Uh, Demolish won't be played um, unless like you know sideboard in your draft deck if they have a bunch of artifacts, which there's really not too many good ones in the set. Yep. The land thing is pretty relevant. People will do it because people love playing land destruction. In limited, which doesn't really make sense. Yep. Uh, okay. Next up, Dragon Egg. Uh, it's okay. I hate this card. It, it could. It didn't have to be three mana. Would you want like two mana? This could have been one, and it wouldn't have made a difference. You think so? Yeah. I think one mana would have been like really sweet. Well, if it was like a one mana for an O2, like you still got to get it killed, okay? And then like if they kill it, you you get a two two for with fire breathing for one. Like, that's not that crazy. No. I don't know. I mean, you could have, like, sacrifice. It's really boring to me. It's not. It's, it's not flavorful, actually. definitely. It is flavorful. Uh, and then so dragon, dragon Hatchling. Ooh, it's amazing. Yeah. Um, well, I mean, where did dragons is, come from? Dragon Hatchling is better than the Dragon Egg. Right, because there's no it's, work. It's cheaper. There's no work you have to do. Uh, it's cheaper. You can immediately start attacking. Yeah. Um, it's not awesome, but it's, it's definitely playable. Yeah. Uh, Flames of the Firebrand, however, excellent. Yeah, good card. Glad it's getting reprinted. Yeah, we've seen it plenty of times before. Well, not plenty of times, but we've seen it before. Yep. Yeah. And it did a lot of work. Next up, Flesh Pulper Giant. This is a reprint, right? 
I don't think so. I mean, the artwork doesn't look familiar. Bush to me, Pulper but. Giant? I, I thought he was in the long one because he was a giant. I don't know, it's possible. Talk about the card, it sucks. Uh, Flesh Pulper Giant, uh, I like what it does, but it's so expensive. Like, uh, you're just not going to be able to play this, and by the time you play this, you want to be, like, killing their bombs. Oh, no, it, it is brand new. Never. You want to be killing their bombs, so he doesn't do that. Like, card sucks. Next. The game's gone on so long, I'll finally kill that 2-2. Yeah. It's a 7-mana giant as a 4-4. Four four. Like, there's an inherent problem with that. That's the next card. Yeah, Goblin Diplomats, uh, you know. It's a card for jerks. He's a jerky card, yeah. Just mess with combat. I, you know. Guy just wants to make card. everything, like, difficult all the time. I mean, even yeah. the, the artwork shows that. Like, they're just, like, pain in the asses. Literally, like, you know, teasing you. Yeah. Uh, next. Uh, Goblin. Goblin Shortcutter. I like this guy because, like, something like Firefish Striker is, like, perfectly fine, and this guy gives you immediate impact. And you can cast off a Burning Tree Emissary. I mean, Firefish Striker is just straight up better, though, right? Right, but Firefish Striker doesn't give you an impact, like, when it comes into play. So, like, you play this guy when he comes into play, and then you are able to attack that turn instead of having to wait for the next turn. Yeah, I could see that if, like, your goblins are relevant. But, like, Firefish Striker is also a human, so you're not going to play it. Right, well, the, the, some of the decks that play Firefish Striker anyway don't care about him being a human. No, like, straight up red deck? Yeah, yeah just yeah. a straight up red deck. I think I think there's like room for both. Lava axe, in case you want to do five damage sometimes. Boom. <laughs> At sorcery speed for five mana. Yeah. Now, lightning talons. Um, I like this enchantment. Decent enchantment. Um, first strike is awesome. First strike with a three boost of power, very good. Yes, it reminds me a lot of madcap skills, because like it's the same three power with like an annoyingly hard to kill creature. Okay. I think I like. Except this gives you like defensive capabilities if you if you really want to go that route. Yeah, I think Talons is more versatile, but Madcap skills does more damage. I feel. Yes. Next up, uh, Marauding Mallhorn. Like the picture. I'm okay with it. Not yeah, I mean, now. he's four mana for five, which is fine because like we played uh, what is it, Rubble Hulk? Not Rubble Hulk. Uh. The the picture of the guard that like it's just a street turning into a creature and return to Ravnica. Oh, the one that was a cycle of that was one of each, like each color had one. It was just a vanilla dude, like you yeah, know, like five one haste or something. That one. And, uh, cobble something. Cobble cobble. Oh, no. cobble brute. Cobble brute. Maybe it was cobble brute. Yeah. Whatever. So, like, uh, he was fine. Like you could play him just because he was a big body for relatively cheap. And this guy's like in the same vein and with like a little more toughness. So, yeah, this one does have this like sweet upside though of like if you have yes, that guy. if you have the green if you have the green component, um, you know, with Advocate of the Beast, something that you could not attack. You know, it's easily it makes you know makes your beast much better too. The Advocate does. So it's yeah, a nice little combo. Next up, Mind Sparker. Uh, this card is really good in my opinion. James yeah, a lot of people really hate this card, but I, I, I kind of agree with you. It's got more potential than I gave it credit for. I mean, it's a 3 mana, 3-2 three, first strike, already good. And then the, the bonus is, like, really relevant. Like, free shocks every turn is, not, like, in the matchup we were playing against blue-white, it's like, they have to play spells even just to deal with this. So you're going to at least get two damage. Yeah, I, don't know, I just think like he could have been a little more aggressive because he feels really slow to me. Like, the effect is, is sweet, but if this guy was, like, two mana for, like, a 2-2, two -two, I, I think it would be much more playable. Yeah, I mean, I will say the one thing that, um, like, you know, blue, white, red, flash is obviously a, a, this card you would want it in, but the main, like, warning sign for being the red side of it playing this card is like they still have restoration angel which just eats this card for free right and they yep. play restoration angel most of the lists have just gone to like three to four restoration angels now because it's just so good for that deck mm -hmm. so you know mind sparker is uh i think really good card but uh you know you still got to worry about those typical cards which hose that deck anyways yep so a card that is a main deck card in blue or red flash hoses a sideboard card that you bring in to hose their deck. Like it's their decks are their main deck's already beating your sideboard at that point. Yeah, that's true. That's not really where you want your sideboard to be. 
I mean, I still bring it in because it still does a ton of work if they if they don't have Angel and they have to, like think twice is and you know. Yeah, like there's a really strong chance of losing the game. But they probably shouldn't have kept a hand like that in the first place. True. Uh, Molten Birth. Uh, cool card. I like it for the tokens, like in a limited format. Um, the fact that you can maybe potentially they bring it back to your hand is, is cool. Uh, it reminds me of that one that the one that we predicted in modern, not a modern masters. The sapperling one, where you like make two sapperlings and then you get back to your hand or something. Sure. Yeah, you know you know what I'm talking about, just not right now. It's cool. Ogre Battle Driver. We actually just had like a discussion with this card a few minutes ago. Uh, I think he's really good. I think he's pretty bad right now. Uh, one tail rider, Falcon Rider, Risk Rider gone. Uh, I think this card becomes sick. Uh, it makes all your um, you know, top decked Rakdos Cacklers and uh, Chain Walkers and all, all that I stuff. I agree. Like crazy good. Like boom four, boom five. Like, uh, it's a lot better with Chain Walker than it is with Cackler. Yeah. Because like now you have like a five three. Yeah. Coming like, in, coming in like hot. Haste or five, and plus two plus zero is a two. lot. And then like in multiples, this guy's just crazy broken. Like the second one comes down as a five three, followed up by like you know a six two Cackler, you know, and a seven two Chain Walker. Like yeah, pretty sick. But James did have a counterpoint to this, which was sounded pretty good. Yeah, uh, you could play Exava in your four drop slot as well, and you could just play Jund Aggro with like the Colonian Hydra. And I know people know that that interaction exists, but like that seems far more rewarding than like maybe like you know your top deck Cacklers come become a little bit better with Battle Driver. Yeah, you could just play Exava, which like makes your top deck Cacklers a little bit better anyway. And Colonial Hydra is disgusting, especially with Exava. Like, that's crazy. Yeah, it's a lot of damage. Yeah, that's, it's an 8 8 trampler on turn 5 with yeah. haste. So, that makes your Exava bigger, too. Yeah, that makes all your Unleashed guys bigger. But I do think the Battle Driver is good, and um, I think. If you, if, you, if you want to be mono red, like, it's perfect for that deck. Yeah, if you want to be mono red, definitely. But this is totally after Hellrider's gone. Like, this guy's not better than Hellrider. No, not, not in the slightest. Uh, Pitchburn Devils, we've seen before. It was excellent uh, in that limited format, and I, I think it'll be excellent. It, yeah, it'll format. probably be fine this one, too. You know. The fact that you get like a free lighting bolt yep. when it dies is pretty sweet. And he, he trades with most guys, so he's, he's he, has, he inherently has this two-for-one kind of uh, effect. Yes. Uh, Regothan Firecat is a Firecat. I am not a big fan of this guy. Uh, he just he basically trades with a small guy. He's a three-mana yes. four-one, which is decent. Yeah. Yeah. Um, if he was like, you know, if he had haste, like lighting elemental or something, then yeah, he becomes awesome. Yeah, it reminds me a lot of blistering fire cap. But that was that was sick. That was actually sweet. Yeah. Because yeah. that was haste and travel. And morph. Yeah, and morph. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh, dragon, scourge of Valkas. Reminds me so much of um, Flame Tongue Kevu, but not as awesome as Flame Tongue Kevu. Yeah, not as awful. Like more mana, less damage. I mean, if you're in in Dragonville, then yeah. He, does a lot of damage when he comes in. Uh, I feel like this card could have actually been good and very playable if it was like X is the number of creatures you control instead of dragons you control. Yeah, I mean, he is mythic, so like that does, it's not unreasonable. No, like they could have done something like that. Like if, no one's ever going to have this much dragons. Like this feels like, with that one clause, like makes it not standard playable, but like strictly like EDH playable. You know, there's just not enough dragons. All right, I'm living the dream. Dragon's Egg, Dragon Hatchling, and the Scourge. Now I got a bunch of dragons. Tell you what, you do that, and then I'll come up with a crappy deck idea, and we'll go to F and M. Sounds good. <laughs> and we'll just lose horribly and hate our, hate our decision. Uh, yeah, I mean, Scourge is like an absolute monster bomb in, in Limited. I mean, that's, that's undeniable. Mostly because he's a 4 foot flyer with fire breathing. Yeah, for 5 mana. Yeah. Uh, seismic Stomp, I think, is awful. Creatures without flying hand block this turn. That's it. Next. Uh, Shiv's Embrace is probably my Oop. favorite enchantment so far. Yes. Uh, I like Shiv's Embrace. You know, it's four mana, but it does, like, three really good things. Like, make your guy bigger, make him flying, and fire breathing. Yeah, the flying is, like, the biggest part. Like, uh, red usually doesn't have something like flying. No. Um, sure. And the fact that you can put, like, on everything is really sweet. Uh, I mean, I've seen enchantments that give, like, plus one plus one in a flying or something similar for, like, yeah. the same mana cost, just, like, or, like, equal. Yeah, this is a lot of power. So this is, this is a good enchantment. Like, I feel like, you know, yes, you still have the potential to get two for one, 
but the upside on this is just disgusting. Like, this will close the game out right. real fast. Yeah, I like this a lot. Yet another dragon. Shivan Dragon. Shivan Dragon. This is an oldie. Like, oh, such yeah, an oldie. Classic. It's the first rare I ever opened. Yeah, that Revised, you traded. Maybe. Revised, that yeah. you traded, like, immediately. I immediately traded for an entire green deck with Force of Nature. And then lost to the dragon. Yep. But, lesson for you. Flying is good. So, another dragon. So now we've got four dragons. Uh, one your, your deck's shaping together. Here's, here's, here's a shock for you to help wow. you uh, shore up those like, aggro matchups. I'm ready to go. You play F and M right now. <laughs> Someone's gonna make the damn deck too. I, I, honestly, I might do it. I might do it. Just, just to like mess with everybody. Like I show up with this. Scourge of Valkus. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like people will be like, "What? What is going on?" This is like a play the fifteen cent mythic and see how far you can get. Yeah, yeah. Like I, I want to play. Like I'll, I'll, all right, all right. I'm gonna do it. I'm gonna commit to it right now. I will show up. And play this. <laughs> we should make these decks and play them on camera for everyone. That would be funny. Yeah. All right, all right let's do that too. All right. <laughs> Having fun. Uh, shock's fine. Like, you know, it, shock to it, shock. It'll, it'll, it'll we, see play. We might have to play it. Yeah. Smelt. Uh, there's, there's, there's better stuff to do. I mean, yeah, it's like a, a sort of a sideboard card, but like there's other sideboard options. Like, if, if you're playing white and red, I really like the, the split card. Yeah. Wear and tear. So, yep. Uh, striking Sliver. How about this one? One on first strike? This one's good. Seems pretty good. This one gets the seal of approval. Nice. But the thing with the, uh, it, unless you have the, the muscle sliver reprint, which we'll get to eventually, yeah. um, I like you're just going to be like one one. So like the first trick isn't terribly like that relevant. Super relevant, yeah. yeah. You know, it's like, pfft, my one one has first strike. Oh, my three three doesn't give you crap. Well, how about this one then? The thorn caster sliver. Uh, I don't like it. This one I, I think is one of the worst ones. Like, yeah, I, I do love that. Like when a creature attacks, you get a free damage thing. But five mana... Kind of expensive, 2-2. Two, two. I don't know. Yep, I agree. I don't know. I don't I don't think he's good enough. I don't think he is. Me either. He's uh, just he's just he's just too expensive and like like I said earlier, you want your silver deck to be killing ASAP. Right. And uh this guy doesn't do it. He gives you a little bit of reach, but so sort of, sort of like, you know, burn spells or just removal. Right. Uh, next up, really good combat trick and Thunderstrike for limited. Yep, um, I like this one a lot. A, a boost of power plus first strike is a great combat trick. Uh, it's usually a total blowout. It's usually like you know, kill a big creature, uh, and you know, quite happy to play that that kind of combat. First strike is just always good. Uh, next up, Volcanic Geyser. This is like windmill slam first pick in draft like all the time. Yeah, you know, fireball and, effects. Fireball are effects are just crazy awesome, and ridiculous. Like. Kills anything, kills the biggest thing, kills the opponent, like, value all over it. And then Volcanic Geyser being instant, even better. They could cost one more, but whatever. That's fine. It's, all, it's, all, it's like almost always worth it. So, excellent card. Not good enough for, for Constructed. Yep. Next up, Wild Gas sucks. Next. <laughs> we don't like Wild Gas. Wild Ricochet. Uh, still not a fan of that card either. Uh, had it before. Casual players love it. Um, it's awesome in EDH. Obviously. Yeah, because everybody's dropping like crazy spells, you know. Being able to just like wild ricochet, ha ha, I win. And then uh, last card for red is Young Pyromancer. Uh, arguably the best red card in the set. So probably, uh, it's definitely super hype. People talk about like legacy applications for this card, and that's like crazy off the walls. Whenever cards are get talked about in legacy, like immediately, that tells you like powerful stuff's happening. Talrand is a good card because he gives you so much value to all your spells. This is a half mana Talrand. Yeah. He's half the mana and he, like, his tokens are half as small but it's only going from a 2-2 two, two to a 1-1, one, one, you know? Yeah, and, and the Pyromancer himself is a 2-1. So, like, he actually hits hard. Yeah, yeah, he hits he hits hard. So, yeah, this card is uh, uh, definitely one to watch. Especially if, like, the red does get some more sweet, like, good burn. Yeah. Comes really sick. Uh, the obvious, like, combination is red-blue. Because, like, you know, uh, Snapcaster Mage, obviously, is sick with this guy, too. Um, you know, this guy's pretty interesting. Like, what about in the, uh, like, a Niv Mage Elemental deck in Modern? Like, you're eating all your oh, spells all your anyway. And getting a ton of guys. So, like, uh, you're eating your spells anyway, so this gives you another thing with the spell. Like, I'm going to cast Cataxing Probe, and then while it's on stack, eat it to my Nimitz Elemental, you'll still, get the, you'll still get the 1-1. One, one. What is the 1-1 one, one doing for me, though, at that point? 
It's just more dudes to kill, more, more to push and more damage instead of just having like one guy that they just like path. This isn't like basically next turn you just have a bunch of one ones to then start. To yeah, because then they have to deal with both the Niv Mages and with a bunch of one ones. It's almost like a uh, empty the warrants type effect. Like you just make yes. six one ones and then just get there off that. Yes, it just gives you a little more value out of like your spells and like your deck. That's that's maybe. Um, I could see like a blue red Delver, you know, in modern with that with lightning bolt and path and the sheer value. Yeah, and, like some swords. Yeah, know. it's pretty much like the same thing. Like just again like, going for extra value. So, uh, excellent card, uh, definitely a card that benefits to, you know, build around it, um, but very powerful effect. Yep, keep an eye on it. Yep. Well, that's red. Uh, we'll come back tomorrow with uh, the rest. Yep, thanks for watching. See ya.